taken by this feeling baby we're invincible Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of Rebuilding Notts County. As always, if you're enjoying the series, drop a like, that'd be tremendous. Now, I thought we'd start with Sam Cherry. I think he came through the youth intake in the first season, actually, and has done okay. I mean, you can see the progression, frankly. For a guy that doesn't have a huge amount of like, actual overall potential, he's been on a steady climb up and doing reasonably well playing for our sort of under-18s, under-23 side, and I can't really fault him for that. That being said, his average rating hasn't been particularly good, and he's only made 11 substitute appearances uh, in those games, so it's not been fantastic for him. I don't know if we can actually see uh, how he's done in the other matches. So the first season, uh, that means he actually came through in the first year of this save, so that's interesting. Um, last year, 16 starts, 5 substitute appearances, a couple of goals in there, 5 assists. Pretty solid year. This year, I think it's because he's been playing more in the under-23s that he's really sort of struggled to find some form. But still, he's actually fulfilling a lot of the potential that he seems to have, which isn't a great deal, admittedly. But it's just nice to see players progressing playing for our under-23 side. 17 dribbling with 9 acceleration and 8 pace. What does this guy do to get past players? Flip-flap them until they fall over so he can amble past. Yes, exactly. And sometimes, when he's feeling extra fruity, he'll just stare directly into their eyes until they fall in love, and then they'll just let him through. It's it's just, it's a simple situation, really. I just love that Sam Cherry has aims to be in the current first team in the coming years. Oh, Sam, 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 you sweet summer child. Um, you can be in for a big surprise, buddy, because um, my guess is you'll end up playing in the Vadarama National League South, um, with all fairness to him. In fact, I'm not even sure if he's at that kind of level currently. What is he kind of looking at at the moment? In fact, we literally don't even know. And he's a mercenary as well. There you go. Currently operating at National League North South level. Yeah. Uh, that sounds about right. So today it's going to be a little bit different because we've got an FA Cup first round tie. I know you're going to you're going to love this. We got Gateshead. We actually got a team that weren't like a League One side in the FA Cup first round. We're playing a National League North side in Gateshead. So a team, uh, what, three divisions below us now. So we might actually be able to put up a bit of a scoreline against them, which would be nice just to get some confidence in the players and see how we can get through to the cup because we are supposed to try and get to the third round this year. And provided we get a solid tie in the second round, if we get through, of course, then we should be in good shape to do that, which is really, really nice indeed. We've then got a game off camera against Accrington Stanley in the stupid trophy no one cares about, which we really do kind of need to go and win because, well, let's face it, we need to get through to the next round of that annoying trophy as well. I hope that next season, regardless of what division we're in, the board won't care so much about that. And then we're playing Bolton, who are currently dead last in the league, having a woeful time of it. Even if you discount the fact that they're in administration, their points tally is probably, I think, still dead bottom of the league, to give you an idea of where they're at right now, which is a real shame for them. So, after that Sunderland result, which I have to say was a f completely... Like, we were fortunate to get even a point from that game. Uh, and Sunderland do look very, very good at the moment. We were able to go away to the MK Dons and get a 1-0 victory. Fairly scrappy game. Uh, they they did have more shots on target, but it was fairly even. I think we were fortunate to win this one, to be honest. The ball was headed away, and Tunji Akinola hit a thunderous volley in the 88th minute to give us a fantastic win. But once again, a clean sheet on the night. Stephen Lennon this time getting the clean sheet. I think he deserved one against Sunderland based on his performance. Perhaps not the teams around, players around him, but he got one in this game anyway and continues the solid defensive shape that we really have been working on tremendously. Regan Booty was again fantastic. No surprises there. In the next game at home against Bristol Rovers, who started off very, very strongly this season, but kind of faded away. This was a poor performance overall like we didn't create a lot of shots on target still had a decent number of chances um booty was rested out for this one because he needed a rest so we had o'reilly and burton in the midfield and o'reilly was excellent frustrating though is in the final minutes of the game literally in the 93rd minute ian saunders put a wonderful ball across and there was matt o'reilly and he should have scored and he not, didn't even hit the target he just put it wide we should have won it at the death weren't able to do it but again saunders was okay murphy no sorry not murphy mcphee not so great another clean sheet though for stephen lennon but just looking a little bit lax on the scoring front as of late just sort of struggling with the uh, putting the ball in the net sort of situation. Campbell had a slight knock, so Hegeber started this game. But a nil-nil draws not the end of the world. And then finally, we had an absolutely incredible match against Scunthorpe, where both teams were creating tons and tons of chances. When you actually look at the match stats here, uh, we created four clear cuts, three half chances. They had a clear cut and five half chances in this match. Honestly, it could have been 4-3 the amount of chances that were going in. It's crazy. So the fact that it ended up being only 1-0 to us is actually a very, very massive surprise. Regan Booty, again, was phenomenal in this match. Got the assist for this one. Uh, the ball was intercepted by O'Reilly. I think it was, actually. Yes, no, it can't have been. He was off the pitch. Whoever was replaced, it was Burton. Dropped the ball down to Regan Booty, who played a wonderful ball into the channel for Ian Saunders. One touch to set himself. Slipped it in the side of the... Uh, just a lovely little shot to the far post. A fifth goal of the season for Ian Saunders, who really is taken to that role like a duck to water now. He's not always super consistent, and he does sometimes have poor matches, but he's scoring goals from that right 
right wing spot and that's super pleasing for us and for Regan Booty to get another man of the match award uh, and another assist on the night is truly superb and another clean sheet for Stephen Lennon and the club I think we're on to 13 clean sheets now for the season utterly amazing uh, even with Luke McGee not in the side Lennon has stepped in beautifully also our junior coaching budget has been increased which is really really nice and is now considered excellent the board obviously let me do that because we had a bit more money I suppose because I'm not spending loads of the wage budget currently which is quite useful and our youth recruitment has been increased to well established which is also excellent there was one other thing I changed to oh that's right they're gonna let our scouts have more money in wages which should when we do get a chance to get more allow me to get slightly better ones because most of the ones I've been getting have been around about the 13 14 mark on their PA and uh, CA judging with adaptability usually up there as well I'd like to get a bit higher than that but that being said they're still pretty solid and hopefully we can find some more absolute gems there's a few more I'm looking at at the moment so we might be able to bring in a couple more in January because I really do want to just keep bringing in as many of these young regions as possible we're going to take the scattergun approach and hope it works and all that leaves us second in the league Fleetwood now that they've got Ashley Hunter back again are flying um, they've won, I think, five in a row, might even be six in a row now. They're two points clear of us, and it would have been four had it not been for that late winner uh, against Scunthorpe. And frankly, the late winner in the other game too. We've scored a couple of late winners lately. And had we not scored them, we'd be down there uh, on 39 points with Coventry. But both Coventry and Sunderland still have games in hand on us, so Coventry could go to within two points. Unfortunately, Dara O'Shea's had a hernia. Uh, in fact, we're getting hernias for days here. I don't know what the difference between a hernia and a sports hernia is. Presumably, the sports hernia's got, like, I don't know, lowered suspension big rims on it or something i don't know so um right so dara O'Shea obviously cannot start this match so that's fine because that means charlie oliver will come back in duhaney i've promised to give him a rest so brindley will come in for this game not a huge uh down step anyway everybody else in the actual starting 11 i'm going to keep the same but we're going to make the bench much different i'm going to use that by my new guidelines so pick using guidelines unpick positions so we've got ron coat mellers lee lee earls beresford sam cherry johnny doherty and emilio stavrou will be the bench today that way we can bring on some youngsters particularly if we get ourselves into an early advantage but I'm, I'm riding a lot on this we never know we might muck this up entirely and it turns out they're playing a totally different shape that's fine I think we can probably cope with it, uh, it would be fair to say. Fairly strong lineup out there. This is the kind of game where someone who really wants to step up and show me why they should be playing could potentially fill their boots. I want to see something from Niall McPhee today. This is super important for him against a poor quality opposition to really show me something. Booty to deliver one. Here we go. Back post. And it's off the crossbar. And McPhee has still got the ball at his feet here. Ah, and then he's just giving it straight to him. We do look a little bit off the pace as of late. I think it's because the... Goals have kind of dried up in the striking situation. And here we go. Ian Saunders driving into the box. He's probably unlikely to score from that angle. And he has put it very comfortably wide. Good ball and needed. Oh, it's all the way across. A wow. <laughs> Who else would come up and rescue this? I just, I love him. He does this. And this season, he's actually been even better than he was in League Two. That's seven assists and seven goals in all competitions for the club this season. I think he could get double figures for both now. Lovely ball in from Brindley. Just loses his marker. Beautiful little header. The goalkeeper can do nothing about it. And Regan Booty scores his seventh goal of the season. What a legend. But when you want a leader, he is the man for the job. Like, he's such an inspirational leader on the pitch for these guys. And I think he's probably the best club captain I've ever had on an FM save. He is just everything you'd want from a club captain. And I actually genuinely hope that we can maybe keep him for the entire save provided he doesn't want to leave or anything like that um but if we keep doing well then he won't want to leave us but it might be that later down the line he's not quite up to scratch i don't know maybe he can be campbell and it's saunders is in it's going to be blocked though oliver over the top for tyrese campbell he's in one-on-one -on -one. he'll probably miss and he has shocker oliver clears it here we go breakaway chance now for o'reilly can he find a ball over the top or maybe even to saunders out wide goes for mcphee instead what a ball ian saunders picks it up he's going to drive towards the box he might get the shot away pulls it back for tyrese campbell o'reilly oh wow Matt O'Reilly makes it 2-0 to Newport. Uh, sorry, no, I keep saying that for some reason to Notts County. What a thunderous effort from Matt O'Reilly. He's definitely got a few more goals in him this year. Not quite like that first season. This is really nice build-up, actually. Saunders knocks this inside. Campbell, instead of trying to shoot, just rolls it back. And O'Reilly, an absolute thunderbolt of a goal for 2-0. And that will finish things off very nicely for us. Really nice goal. Definitely going to make some subs soon. Booty whips one. He's flicked it. It's cleared. And apparently it's a penalty, which I assume Campbell will take. Well, this would really put the icing on the cake. And Tyrese Campbell, that's a great save. Saunders is there, though. Can he put the ball in the box? He does. Campbell! And it's saved by Hammond. Oh. And you know what? Since I was talking about him earlier in this episode, I'm going to give Sam Cherry his first start, too. Not his first start, his first appearance. Saunders. Oh. Bursting past people. He's actually all the way in here. Go on, Ian. Holy shit. 
Right, I know they're a lower tier side, but Ian Saunders right there has just shown one of the reasons why I'm very interested in this guy. So much so that Stephen Lennon, the goalkeeper, has got a, an assist from that. Saunders has just turned on the afterburners, blown past the defenders, lots of composure here, and just rolled one into the far side. That's very similar to the goal he scored against Scunthorpe. And now it's 3-0 Ian Saunders. What a goal. Well, that's been a thoroughly professional job. Hello, Saunders is through again. Surely he's not got another one. Surely it's a bit too tight. And he really should have scored another one. I think he was offside anyway, yeah. Uh, nine chances created. That's a bit more like it from us. The sort of old school type of performance, but really nice goals. Uh, Booty, great work from him. O'Reilly with a thunderbolt and Ian Saunders with a really composed finish. I'm seeing a lot of those out of him. Booty with the eight key passes on the night. Solid stuff. Right, got a quick game off camera and then we're going to come back for Bolton in the league. And we'll probably have an FA Cup draw to talk about in there as well. Right, we're back. So we did have the one game off camera in the Stupid Trophy No One Cares About Cup. And Tyrese Campbell gave us the winner in this one. Pretty strong side as we wanted to make sure that we at least got through. We got Sunderland in the next round as we came second in our group. But I think this game is kind of the definition of what happens when you sort of switch off the set piece situation is essentially we created 10 chances against Accrington Stanley, like six of which were one-on-ones and they all missed. Every single one of them. And I feel like if this was a game where we had those set pieces turned on, we'd have probably won it about 4-0 with three of them coming from corners and free kicks. But... I don't know, I just want to play the game where we're scoring goals properly. Uh, thankfully, we were able to get one uh, through Tyrese Campbell. Milan Bars put a cross in. Tyrese Campbell had a shot which deflected past the goalkeeper and in. And that was the only way we were able to break them down. Everybody else was excellent on the night, particularly Milan Bars. But still, it would have easily gone another way had we not managed to get that lucky break on that one. And not only that... Uh, we got offered the Crystal Palace job, which is quite a big step up from the jobs we've been offered so far. So, yeah, obviously we turned it down, but there you go. So, obviously, uh, oh, wow, we actually can't play Stephen Lennon. I don't think McGee is fully back yet either, so it might have to be a case of a conquo. This does not bode well. Let's do the selection advice to move stuff around. Uh, right, we don't want to bring Baldwin back in, but Saunders picked up a slight knock in the last game. So, actually, uh, Charlie Oliver, due to the injury there. Okay, so that's that's relatively solid. A little bit of knackeredness in some places, but I'm all right with that, really. Um, not my first choice of wingers currently, but you never know. So on the bench, Culverwell, Brindley, Burton, Coates, McCrory, Saunders. Oh, he is available, but yeah, I think we can do with a little rest. And of course, Ramey Campbell. Wait, no. Yeah, Ramey Campbell. <laughs> Bolton are going for it, aren't they? This could be a very interesting game. And away we go here. Away at Bolton. We need to be coming here and getting a simple victory. That's the way this one should pan out. They are in deep trouble. And I'd be surprised if they actually get above like 20 points in this whole season at this rate. But it's up to us to do our job. Uh, and get this over the line. Particularly with Fleetwood playing against... Uh, who are they playing? I think they're playing Crew at home. Another game you'd expect them to win. And Hereford lock up. And... Whoa, God. Bolton are off to a flyer here. Brockbank cleared away. Booty. Bars. Looking long. And Baldwin's going to get this, you know. And he's found Campbell. He's in a bit of a tight angle here. He might still get the shot away. And he does. And Annick saves it. And Campbell's actually kept it in. Like I said, off to a flyer with a chance creation. It's going to be... Oh, my God. It's end to end. Simmons is now through for Bolton. And he's not scored. Insane. A Conqueror has made two amazing stops in the first five minutes. Okay, it's been a strong start from Bolton. Fair play. And O'Reilly, can he bend one? Round the post as Fleetwood have already taken the lead in their game. O'Reilly, I think first goal is super important in this game. Because the other team's just going to have to go even more attacking after that. And O'Reilly hits the post. Okay, we're starting to turn the screw a little bit more now. But Bolton's still having a decent number of shots on target. Campbell and Baldwin is... Oh my god, that should have been a goal. And it's well won by Atkinson, actually. But Fleming might win this back. He might not, though. Simmons is in again. And a Conquo. Oh, and that actually wasn't offside. That was a good chance for Bolton. And it's inside for Sims again. And it's in. He's offside. Ellis Sims is offside this time. Bolton denied the go-ahead goal. Well, half-time. Nil-nil. Bolton have had the better chances in this one. We've had a few, but Bolton really probably should be in front as things stand. Fleetwood winning their game. No surprises there. Um, hmm. I want to remain a threat. Fleming. Booty. So it's through for Campbell. Oh, there we go. Tyrese Campbell finally breaks the deadlock for us here. 14th goal of the season for him. And more importantly, another assist for Regan Booty. He just starting to run the show in the midfield here. But this is just a really nice little ball. Campbell just makes a lovely little run and Booty just drops it through. Campbell with one touch to turn and a lovely finish in the far corner. I think we've just... Well, no, actually, I don't think we have in a way. But getting a win like this over the line in a match you have to be winning is super important if we do have any hopes of going up this year. And Booty's through again! Oh my god, Regan Booty should have scored there. I think he... Given the way he's played this year, I would have nailed on him to score there. Dehaney. O'Reilly. Dehaney again. Regan... Well then, there's your booty bang up. My giddy aunt, Regan Booty. That is something. He has just comfortably made up for the shot he just missed with an absolute thunder bastard, or more importantly, a booty banger. Look at this for a strike. Comes back to him and he's absolutely thundered one into the top of the net. Bolton nil, Notts County 2, Regan Booty with a thunder strike.
It's been a while since we've actually seen a full-on booty banger. And the fact that he scored in both games in today's episode again. And Tyrese Campbell now breaking the back line. And now Bolton are all over the shop. And Campbell's gone round the goalkeeper and puts it in for 3-0. Bolton nil, Knox County 3. And they have just completely capitulated to us in this second half. And I now understand fully why they are bottom of the division. Uh, ball over the top from Baldwin. Campbell breaks the back line here. But, and then look at the defender jumping in there. He's actually gone round the goalkeeper and then slotted it into the back of the net. 15 for the season for him and another assist this time for Baldwin. I know I rant and rave about how good Regan Booty has been in this save, but genuinely, he's just he just continues to surprise me by getting better and better. Baldwin, can he score it now? He's found Booty! Oh, he's getting forward into the channel. And oh my God, what's number 34 doing? And a Conquo has saved it again. I don't know what Charlie Oliver was playing out there. Oh, he's gone past one. And Robbie Burton's through. And it's a good save by Anik. Goes for goal. Nothing happening there. It's going to be Bolton nil, Notts County 3 here at the Macron. And yeah, I fully understand why Bolton are bottom. Bolton? Bolton are bottom of this league. Two goals for Tyrese Campbell. One thunder strike from Regan Booty. And they have been absolutely sunk. They created some good chances today. Oconquo was excellent, I have to say. Um, but that's why they're bottom, because they can't take their chances. And we, even we were scoring one-on-ones in this match with Campbell. That's how bad Bolton were. Uh, I can't believe that. Just a really, really excellent performance. Fleetwood still top of the league, though. But Coventry have got two games in hand on us now, as do Sunderland. So they could still go back to within two points of us. But we do look pretty damn good at the moment. Bolton absolutely dead in the water now at this point. No win in 20 matches this season so far. And I mean, how far? They're 21 points from safety. I think they'll struggle to break... They might even struggle to break 10 points at this rate. We've only conceded eight goals in 20 matches so far this season, which is the main reason our goal difference is so high. I don't think we've scored that many more than anyone else particularly. It's just that defensive side of things. I mean, look how much better we are in defense than Blackpool. But Fleetwood have just won everything recently. And you feel like Coventry will as well. Charlton, however, have completely shat the bed. They were right involved and now they've lost five in a row and slipped down to, um, yeah, mid-table. So not so great for them. I will happily take that so... Oh, well, you know what it's going to be. Next episode is going to have to be Coventry City away from home. That's going to be a massive game. Uh, and then, yeah, there's Fleetwood in there too, but we can maybe do some other stuff for camera in between there. So, yeah, it's going to be Coventry City away from home in the, the next episode. And obviously, we've got Dagenham and Redbridge in the FA Cup. So that should be winnable too. Hopefully, we can get to the third round in there. So... If you've enjoyed this episode, and I really hope you have, drop a like on the video. That's been spectacular. I've just noticed we've not conceded a goal in six competitive matches now. The defense is absolutely unreal. Yeah, drop a like. That'd be fantastic. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. That'd be awesome too. I'll see you guys soon. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.